When you first open Illustrator, you'll be greeted with this screen. This is where you can either open an existing file or create a new file. If you want to create a new file, you do have some presets that are commonly used sizes that you may be interested in using. So there are the available ones that are listed here. You can also click on more presets to get a list of further presets. And in addition, you can dial in your own width and height for any sort of image that you're using, as well as specifying a color mode and how you want the raster effects to be treated. What we'll do to start off with is to start off with a letter size file. I'm going to change my orientation to be landscape and I'm going to be working in RGB because ultimately I'm going to want to be creating artwork that I can use in conjunction with other applications, specifically After Effects. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at how we can use Illustrator so that we can set up our files so that they work correctly in After Effects. With that being said, what we're learning now is something that you can use in any project and any Illustrator file. So with these settings specified, I'm going to click Create. It's going to create a new document for me. And this is what my interface currently looks like. I am currently in the default essential view. If we go to Window and we go to Workspace, you can choose from any of these preset workspaces. And in addition, you can make your own workspace and then save that. I'll be using the Essentials Classic Workspace. So when I change this, you'll notice how some of the menus and panels are going to switch around. This is the preferred workspace that I like to use. This has most of the various panels and window sets that I use most often. Just to give you a quick tour, this area over here is your toolbar. This contains all of the tools that you have access to in Illustrator. Any tool that has a small triangle in the lower right hand corner is an indication that you have more tools underneath. So this will give you a list of grouped tools. If you find that you're often switching between these two tools, you'll see that these tools with the flyouts have a little bar in the right hand side. This is called a tear off. And if you click that, you'll see that you now create a free floating panel that you can place anywhere within the Illustrator document. And then you have easy access to all of the sub tools underneath that specified tool. In addition, you can collapse this panel to make it appear in a one column layout, or you can close it altogether. In addition to the tools, we also have an option to set our fill color and our stroke color. This little hooked arrow allows you to switch your fill and stroke colors, and you can double click on any of these color chips, which is going to open up the color picker and allow you to change the fill and or stroke color. Underneath the fill and stroke, we have the option to change from a solid color to a gradient or to no fill or stroke. So if I set this to none, I'm going to create an object that simply has a stroke and no fill. These options down here allow you to draw elements that are either normally created or behind something else. And finally, this allows you to change screen modes. So we have the option to go into presentation mode, which will remove all of the panels, full screen mode with menu bar, or just full screen mode. I'll leave mine at normal screen mode. Over on the right, we have a series of panels. The property panel acts like somewhat of a chameleon. So depending on what it is that you have selected or what tool you're using, this panel is going to change and give you options that are specific to that particular object and or tool. The library panel will allow you to access any linked libraries that you have within your application. And then we have a whole nother set of collapsed panels that are appearing in this first column. If we click the double triangles, these panels will expand and you'll see the full panel. Obviously this is taking up quite a bit of real estate, so you can collapse these so that they take up less space. You can also collapse the second panel as well. If the panels are collapsed, if you simply click or tap on any of these icons, it will open up as a flyout. So here we have access to our swatches and the swatches are bundled with brushes and symbols. So we can either click right here 
to switch and show the panel for brushes, or if we click the symbol icon, it'll switch us to the symbol panel. If you want to tuck these back in, you simply click the double arrows that are pointing to the right, and then that menu will disappear. Some of the panels will have a hamburger menu icon, and this is going to give you additional options for that particular panel. So here, if I click show options, it's going to expand my stroke panel out and show me additional options. If I come back here, I can hide these options. Some of the other panels will have different options available. So this is my swatch panel, and you can see I have different sorts of actions that I can take by using the flyout menu. Up here at the top, we have additional options. And again, this part of Illustrator is more of a chameleon. So depending on what sort of tool we have selected, these options can change. But this is a quick area that I could potentially change the fill color, change my stroke color and or weight, change the opacity of the element. I have access to my align palettes as well as I have the option to numerically control the size of my shape. A couple of the tools that I want you to be familiar with is the black arrow is called the selection tool. This will allow you to select an element and then you can simply click, hold and drag to move that element to a new location. In Illustrator, you can click to select something or you can click, hold and drag and just tag a corner of the object. Either way will allow the object to become selected. If I switch from my rectangle tool to the ellipse tool and create an elliptical type of shape, I can draw the shape in any formation that I want. If I want to create a perfect circle, I'll need to tap my shift key and this will allow me to create a perfect circle. If you have multiple objects on your screen, you can click, hold, and drag and tag both objects to select both elements at the same time. If you place one element on top of the other, because the elements are vector, when we click away and deselect, unlike raster programs, the elements aren't merged together, but they still exist as separate entities and you can go back and move them at any time. When you have an object selected in Illustrator, you'll notice that you have a bounding box that appears around the object. Depending on the type of object, you'll have different things that you can do to that particular object. So if I go and select my rectangle tool and I place my mouse right outside the bounding box, you'll see I get a hooked arrow. This allows me to rotate this particular object. If you add your shift key, the rotation is going to be isolated to 45 degree angles. Whenever you're making changes, such as rotating and or scaling an object, you'll need to make sure that you release the mouse first and then the modifier key. If you release your modifier key first, then the shape is not going to move in the way that you would expect it to do. On shapes with corner edges, we have little circles in the inside. This allows us to control the rounding of the corners. So as I pull these circles in, you can see that the edges become more rounded. If I pull them all the way out, the edges are going to be pointed and it's going to be more angular. We do not have those options on elliptical types of shapes. With an elliptical type of shape, you can rotate it, although it's really not gonna look any different for us. And you can also modify the shape by scaling it in an unproportional manner. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to Window and I'm going to select Layers. I like to have my Layer Palette open and you can see that my Layer Panel was active but it was just collapsed. If you ever go to the Window Panel and select a particular window, if the window is already open, it will just make it active. Currently, all of my elements are on layer one. I only have one layer. I do have a little arrow and if I twirl that open, it will show all of the elements that exist within this layer. We can double click on the layer and give it a unique name and you have the ability to create multiple layers to be able to organize your elements. We'll be working with layers as we learn more about Illustrator and begin to create more sophisticated pieces of artwork. 
This gives you a quick overview of the default panels and also we talked about ways that we could select and modify shapes within Illustrator.